And the next item of business is members' business debate on motion 14384 in the name of Ruth Maguire on Outdoor Classroom Day. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would ask those who wish to speak to press the request to speak buttons. I call on Ruth Maguire to open the debate for seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I begin by thanking all the members who signed my motion on Outdoor Classroom Day and those who are in the Chamber to uh, take part in the debate this afternoon. Outdoor Classroom Day is a proven catalyst for more time spent outdoors at school, including playtime. The campaign is, of course, about more than just one day. It's a campaign to inspire more time outdoors every day. Time outdoors playing, learning, exploring and having fun, both at school and at home. To achieve this, the campaign has three aims. Number one, that outdoor learning is part of every school day for every child. Number two, that every child has a great playtime at school every day for at least 60 minutes with the longer term aim of 90 minutes. And number three, that schools act as advocates for more time outdoors so that outdoor play becomes part of every child's life every day. Playtime at school and around the school day is so important. The evidence is clear, compelling and robust. Play is not just nice to have. It's not a shame that children don't play outdoors as much as they used to. It's much, much more serious than that. Through playing outdoors, our children can improve their physical health. Children are two and a half times more out active outdoors compared to inside, and they sustain physical activity for longer. Improvements to mental health is also a benefit. Being outdoors makes us happier. We all know this. Just think about how you feel when the sun shines on your face. But multiple research studies from across the world show that whatever the weather, as long as we're dressed right, children and adults feel less stressed, more relaxed and happier if they've been outdoors. Being outdoors regularly and often helps children identify a safe, quiet space where they can reflect. Outdoors and away from screens helps children build positive relationships, making and sustaining friendships and developing the social skills that they'll need throughout life. Outdoor play can also improve academic progress. Children need time to assimilate learning. After playtime outdoors, children are more attentive to lessons, more on task and behave better. In a study of more than 2,500 children in Spain, exposure to total surrounding greenness was associated with a 5% increase in the progress of working memory, a 6% increase in the progress of superior working memory and a 1% reduction in inattentiveness. Outdoor play also helps children connect to the places they live and the planet around them. We only love what we know. Playing outdoors for sustained periods of time regularly and often leads to greater care and concern for the environment. And more green space in urban neighbourhoods in Scotland is linked to lower levels of perceived stress and improved physiological stress. As Sir David Attenborough says, no one will protect what they don't care about and no one will care about what they've never experienced. Research by Tim Gill, the author of No Fear, compared outdoor learning with outdoor play and found that while outdoor learning was important and crucial for understanding scientific facts, it was outdoor play that left children with a love of the outdoors so they'd want to protect it. Children who are happier at schools, more attentive in lessons and feel healthy are far more likely to succeed in school and grow up happy and healthy all their lives. Overall, Scottish teachers that responded to the survey were pretty robust. And right across the UK, 24% said that nothing stops them taking lessons outdoors. And 16% said nothing stops outdoor play. If I can quote one teacher in Scotland, they said, we usually ignore wet playtime and put on our waterproofs and get outside. I give up my break time to supervise this. Midges can be pretty brutal at times, however, we still go outside. That's obviously a teacher from the, the West Coast presiding officer. Um, of all the teachers surveyed across the UK, 99% said they believe playtime outdoors throughout the day is critical for children to reach their full potential. The Scottish Government has committed to encouraging and supporting inclusive play-based outdoor learning as part of the Outdoor Learning Coalition. But playtime at schools is important too. Playtime supports children's social, emotional and academic development within the school day. When schools stand up and tell the world that they believe outdoor play and learning is important, 
and parents will listen and the, louder, and the wider community listens. If we want Scottish children to be successful learners, confident individuals, responsible citizens and effective contributors who want to protect the places that they grow up in and the environment of the planet, then they need more time out of doors. If we want happy children, they need to play out of doors. We have to make playing and learning out of doors every day routine again. By supporting Outdoor Classroom Day, not only today, but on the 23rd of May and 7th of November next year, and by supporting the goal that playtime at school should be at least 60 minutes long, the Scottish Government can send the message that they believe outdoor play is important, not just at school, but at every day. I'm grateful to everyone who signed the motion to let the debate go ahead, and I look forward to everyone's contributions. And then if anyone wants to join me outside for some fresh air afterwards, we can do that too. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the open debate. It's quite heavily subscribed, so can I ask people to keep their contributions tight and no more than four minutes, please. And I call Liz Smith to be followed by Jenny Gilruth. Uh, thank you, Deputy Residing Officer, and can I uh, immediately thank uh, Ruth McGuire for bringing this motion to the Chamber, and it's uh, an issue that is uh, very close indeed to my own heart. I, I don't think there's any doubt that this is a very important, worthwhile, in fact, global initiative, not just in Scotland, in which thousands of schools across uh, the world will take part in the aim of promoting and inspiring uh, outdoor education and play. In uh, 2017, over 2.3 million children worldwide took part, including uh, 530,000 uh, in the UK and Ireland. And this year, over 540,000 are expected to do so. And I certainly, from my own uh, region of uh, Mid-Scotland and Fife, I commend the initiatives in a number of primary schools, such as uh, Letham, Forgan, Denny, Dunbarney, Fossilway, Port Moak and Newthall. And uh, I've just been looking at some of these this morning and I'm exceptionally impressed by some of the initiatives that they have. Now, I did not need any uh, conversion to the benefits of outdoor learning, partly because I'm old enough to be of the generation where the expectations were that you did play outside, uh, often unsupervised, it has to be said, in the company of your own friends, so that you made your own fun. And I remember very long days outside, coming home perhaps only to eat and to sleep, uh, sometimes uh, not coming home at all, I have to say, without uh, parents having to come and find me. And the, the joy of being able to roam freely in fields and woods, up trees with my friends and playing lots of games and sport. We thought nothing about the risks, it has to be said, perhaps we should have done. Uh, but I'm very clear indeed that the experience built in me a very strong resilience, a curiosity about the wider world and a tolerance, much needed, may I say, in today's world when I think tolerance is perhaps sadly missing. It certainly gave me a personal taste for the wilds of Scotland and the staying power which was required to complete the Munro's, uh, particularly on days when I was making a solo ascent in difficult conditions. And I have to tell Ruth McGuire that midges are not just West Coast phenomenon. Um, I was, I hope, well equipped and very experienced because of my outdoor training. Um, but nonetheless, uh, th this is a passion that I want to pass on to many other, particularly young people. And Ruth McGuire has mentioned uh, all the scientific and educational uh, information about just how valuable this kind of education is. I couldn't agree more with that, but actually I don't really think we need it all because I think common sense uh, tells us about the advantages uh, for children's well-being and behaviour. And certainly um, in terms of being able to lower an anxieties and deal with some of the um, mental health issues uh, that we're obviously seeing a growth in uh, just now, I, I think outdoor um, play and education could hardly be uh, more important. And I particularly noticed the recent study by the University of Essex uh, that had done uh, quite, a, quite a lot of quantitative analysis on this. And it, it, was, it was very impressive, actually, about some of the uh, benefits that it could have. Now, according to uh, the results of a new study commissioned by Project DIRT, which I think is a wonderful uh, term, 99% uh, of teachers in the UK believe that outdoor playtime at school is absolutely critical as children try to reach their full potential. But I think, for me, the more important statistic was that 45% of UK teachers questioned whether they were able to do that, partly because of curriculum pressures uh, and some of the issues uh, just around organisational features. But I, I don't think that's the only thing that is holding us back. I think what is much more damaging is the pervasive cotton wool culture. And I think there's an increasing uh, link, dare I say, to what we call the snowflake generation, some of the young people I was speaking to about this, um, which provides us with a lot of food for thought in terms of how we 
um, raise our young people and make them uh, resilient. Because I, I think there, there are too many excuses now for parents to cling to um, in terms of overprotecting their children. And um, I think having an impact that they might miss some of the most uh, valuable learning. Yes, of course. Uh, no, I'm afraid you've come to an end of your contribution. Oh, right. Right. So okay. <laughs> perhaps uh, someone else will let um, the leader of the debate come in. Thank you very much, Ms. Smith. And call Jenny Gilruth to be followed by Jenny Mara. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, can I start by congratulating my friend and colleague Ruth Maguire, MSP, on securing this afternoon's debate, uh, a topic on which I know she has campaigned tirelessly since her own election in 2016. Outdoor learning is, of course, central to the ethos of curriculum for e excellence. And indeed, in Ruth McGuire's contribution, she noted the four capacities of curriculum for excellence, a curriculum which puts the learner at its heart. As a secondary school teacher to trade, however, outdoor learning was not perhaps a natural inclination for me. Maybe that's because secondary schools in Scotland are subject specialist in nature. Perhaps it's because of the age group we teach. Perhaps it's because of the impending doom which afflicts secondary teachers in Scotland around April, the start of the annual examination diet. But when I thought about my own experiences in delivering outdoor learning, I realised that outdoor learning had always been part of the education I had delivered as a teacher. Taking pupils from Elgin High School to Granny's Heel and Hame in Dornach, taking pupils on the annual sponsored walk at the Royal High School in Edinburgh, taking Primary 7 pupils to Dunins in Aberfoyle as part of their residential week at St Columbus High School. Each of these experiences were formative to me as a teacher because they allowed me to form relationships with my pupils out with the formalities of the classroom. In Scottish educational discourse, we often talk about the impact of actions on pupil attainment, for example, and the impact of being an active member of my school community and choosing to take part in these outdoor learning experiences was that it dramatically improved the type of learning and teaching which took place in my classroom. It was also hugely beneficial in confirming with pupils that I and colleagues alike did not in fact live under our desks. And what about the impact of outdoor learning on pupils themselves? A report published by Plymouth University in 2016 confirmed that outdoor learning can have a positive impact on children's development. An Australian research paper published in 1999 claimed outdoor education has clear potential, if well designed, to foster enhancements of personal and social aspects of learning and development. And we know that access to green space is uh, crucial to improving mental health outcomes. Presiding officer, on Monday this week, I was delighted to be joined by pupils from South Park's primary school in Glenrothes um, as part of their community group. Now, earlier in the year, I've been contacted by a number of constituents who had concerns about litter in Riverside Park in the town, particularly because 2018 marks the town's 70th birthday. So I reached out to the local primary school to see if they might be able to help. The pupils from the community group excelled themselves. Bags and bags of litter were collected and the pupils took their jobs as members of the community group very seriously, which was pretty impressive to see a few inspire, uh, aspiring politicians perhaps amongst them. They were directly involved in outdoor learning that meant something though, it was contextualised. Far different from a teacher uh, delivering a lesson in a classroom, teaching them about litter in school, this learning experience was actually meaningful. And whilst I wasn't able to offer pupils the financial payment as one requested, I did promise to facilitate a visit to the community group, from the community group to Holyrood in the future. Presiding officer, before closing, I want to make a short mention of Thornton Primary School, who are taking part in today's outdoor classroom day. The entire school are involved with a range of activities on offer, including den building for younger pupils and an outdoor tour of what's on offer for parents and carers. Primary 7 are taking part in outdoor artwork and younger pupils are taking part in an environmental print walk. Head teacher Irene Johnson said, Outdoor Classroom Day allows the chance to, uh, to help children learn about their environment by teaching them about seasonal changes. It's also important for road safety now that it's getting darker earlier. It allows children the chance to learn about something different to a classroom environment, which is beneficial for those who get restless and, dare I say it, bored in indoor lessons. I commend Irene Johnson and the team at Thornton Primary School for all their work in ensuring Outdoor Classroom Day is as meaningful for pupils as possible. We need hard-working teachers like Irene to make educational opportunities like Outdoor Classroom Day work. So thank you to the teachers in my constituency who are making a difference every day. Outdoor Classroom Day deserves to be celebrated in Parliament and so too do the professionals who ensure it happens in our schools every day. Thank you. Jenny Mara, followed by Rona Mackay. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I thank and congratulate Ruth Maguire for bringing this important debate for the, to the Chamber today. 
I really want to just make a couple of observations, if I may, um, presiding officer, and one based on some personal experience. A couple of years ago, I was um, picking up a couple of young brothers who I often take out during the school holidays, during the October holidays. Uh, I think it was two years ago, it was beautiful October holidays. And to my mind, a time of year where every child should be in the outdoors when the leaves are falling, when we're getting that crisp sunshine, and when it's not too cold to still enjoy the, the changing of the seasons. And so I went, it was October recess, I'd spent the morning in my Dundee office and I went up at lunchtime to pick them up from their out of school club. I asked them what they'd been doing. They'd been sitting inside all morning watching Frozen, Disney Frozen. And it wasn't the first time that week, that beautiful week as the sun was splitting the pavements of Dundee that they had been watching Frozen. I have a real concern, presiding officer, and I support the motion and all uh, what it says about outdoor classrooms and encouraging teachers to take um, children outdoor for their lessons. I think there's a lot of value in that. But I have a real concern that during the holidays in Scotland, not enough children are outside playing. And then Ruth Maguire said in her excellent opening speech as well, there's actually even more evidence around outdoor play than there is around outdoor learning. And I'm really concerned actually about the quality of our care in the school holidays. Now, I recognise that after school clubs, there's homework to be done, the children can be more tired, and that there might be more reasons for being inside. But to my mind, there is absolutely no excuse for um, out of school clubs during the school holidays, holding the children inside to watch repeats of Disney films. I, I think it's disgraceful. I've done a little bit of um, investigation to see presiding officer where the regulation comes of these clubs. I think it rests with local authorities um, and with the care inspectorate, but I don't know if a lot of that has been done. So I would be very interested in the minister responding to that at the end to see if we can get some standards across the board, because I know there are a number of providers, there's private providers, there's local authority providers, but how much time are these kids who their parents have got to work um, and they're in these clubs, how much time are they getting out outside? Because I think there should be a heavy presumption that they should be outside unless the weather really doesn't allow them to be so. And I'd like to touch in my remaining time, presiding officer, on why um, of all the obvious benefits, but of course health um, is a particular concern. I think the Scotsman reported three years ago that there are instances in Scotland of rickets Again, now this is a disease that we thought we had seen go in uh, the 1930s. There was reoccurrence of it in the 1960s in Dundee. And I've heard reports uh, recently that it is reoccurring again. That is partly due to a lack of exposure to vitamin D that comes from the sunshine. Now, of course, the government's health project, I currently have got vitamin D supplements for, for my baby son, and they're given out at the book bug sessions and all the um, sessions that health visitors do across the country. But the best thing we can do is to get our children outside in the sunshine. So I think there are huge health benefits here. And also there is the, um, there is the uh, recorded risk now for MS as well with a lack of exposure to sunshine. So I think with those health benefits and the benefits that Ruth Maguire outlined for children's well-being, their mental health, and what Liz Smith said about their, their robustness, I think is very good. We need to get them outdoors as much as possible. Rona Mackay, followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I'd like to thank Ruth, um, Ruth McGuire for bringing this important debate to the Chamber. Um, outdoor learning is and always should have been a hugely important part of children's education. Um, I look back to the dark ages when I was at school and it was literally that, no daylight during class time except to play netball for a PE lesson and only then if it was deemed sunny enough. So the times are definitely changing and for the better. However, as has been mentioned, we know that for the last decade or more, children are spending well over the recommended daily time playing video games and watching television and way under the recommended time spent outdoors. And I agree wholeheartedly with Jenny Mara's point about holiday and after school clubs. And it's something I hadn't even considered, but it's an excellent point. Um, spending too much time inside negatively affects not only children's health and obesity levels, but also their academic performance and ability to concentrate during class. 
A recent survey of children from 125 schools found that after spending time learning outdoors, 90% of pupils felt happier and 92% enjoyed their lessons more. Likewise, 85% of teachers saw a positive impact in pupils' behaviour and 92% found their pupils to be more engaged with learning. Children who spend more time learning outdoors also develop problem-solving and communicatory skills at a much faster rate than those who learn inside the classroom. And crucially, it helps children with attention deficit disorders. We need to teach children from a young age that learning is an ongoing, exciting process, one that occurs not just within the confines of the school walls, but everywhere and all the time. Of course, outdoor play and learning begins before school, and that's why I'm delighted with the rise in the popularity of forest nurseries. I have an excellent one in my constituency of Strathkelvin and Bearsden, and all the early years providers I've visited in my constituency prioritise having outside space for children to play in all weathers. Such a change from 20 years ago when my son was at nursery. It's important to remember that children don't mind rain, wind or snow. It's adults that object and this can often affect children's attitudes to going outside outdoors when they're older. Presiding officer, the Scouts are experts in outdoor learning and I thank them for the briefing. The Scouts prepare young people for, with skills for life and I know this to be true because my niece and nephew are both active Scouts and are flourishing as a result of their involvement with them. Scout Scotland is the largest co-educational youth movement in Scotland with 51,000 uh, or so members. And last year, 26,000 young people took part in outdoor learning at three Scout Adventure Centres. They believe that learning in the outdoors allows young people the chance to develop skills for life that are both useful in the outdoors, but also back in the classroom. Building fires, learning how to cook, being part of a team. These are all skills that many children miss out on, which would enhance their future pathways. Uh, they also believe that learning in the outdoors away from school or home can be a powerful positive impact on people's, young people's academic achievement and I think that's been proved from what we've, we've been learning today. Um, presenting officer, the Scouts believe that many parents or carers may feel they don't have the confidence or the skills to participate in outdoor learning with their children and in my view possibly time could be a factor in that too. So the Scouts run parent and child camps, not just for Scouts, but for anyone wanting to enjoy outdoor family experiences. So that the facts are clear, we, let's support Outdoor Classroom uh, Day. Outdoor learning leads to healthier, happier young people and healthier, happier adults. Thank you. Wilton McGregor, followed by Alison Harris. Hey, thank you, President Nossam. I want to thank uh, Ruth McGuire for bringing this debate to the Chamber. And I know it's a an issue that she's been uh, very passionate about, and it's one that I also uh, believe in, uh, President Officer. Indeed, I had a question to the Minister just a, a few weeks ago on the, the 3rd of October, and I welcomed her response where she highlighted that play-based learning is an effective and appropriate way to deliver education, and that the curriculum for excellence gives teachers the flexibility to introduce play in early primary, primary years uh, and beyond. Uh, and also, in, in June, met with uh, Turid de Bonholm when she was in Scotland talking about the Norwegian outdoor kindergarten model. It was very interesting. In the part of Norway where this model operates, the weather is often very cold eh, and there are even points in the year where there is little to no hours at all of daylight and yet they have an almost entirely outdoor-based system and the results are absolutely fantastic. So the question she was asking when she'd done a lecture here was why can't we do that here in Scotland where actually the weather is, is much better? And I would encourage any members if they get the opportunity or time to, to check out eh, Turid's work. Um, President officer, I think the case has been well weighed by Ruth McGuire and other speakers uh, about the benefits of play in the, in the outdoors on development and learning and, and mental health and other aspects. So I want to take the rest of my, uh, my time to comment on a couple of examples in my constituency. And it would be fair to say that I could really mention any school in my area and pick out some am amazing examples, but for now I'll focus on just three. <clears throat> One school that strives to incorporate outdoor learning, not just in this day, but every day is Glen Manor Primary in Middlesbrough. I have previously visited the, the fantastic vegetable garden there that pupils have and understand they're currently harvesting the last of the, the year's veg and preparing the vegetable beds for winter whilst composting old leaves and veg. And there are so many lessons to be learned from something as simple as a, a vegetable garden responsibility, nutrition and cooking skills, the science of how things grow, patience, how to be more environmentally friendly and how to reduce food waste, all very important issues. And another great example is from Townhead Primary School in Coatbridge who are involved in a full day of activities today for the whole school. For example, they are doing numeracy outside and recognising shapes in their environment. 
planting scrubs, flowers and a bug hunt. And the children are also involved in building bug hotels and hedgehog homes and they have even taken their literacy outside and finding things uh, around the, the grounds to make a, a poem from. And of course, like Glen Manor and the other schools, outdoor learning is already a very important part uh, of their curriculum. They are one of the first schools to be part of the Seven Locks project, a two-year project which takes place every Friday at Trampelia Locks. It involves linking the community, environment and school with outdoor learning and Pentland School, which is a primary school for social, emotional and behavioural difficulties, also take part in this project and today are on their scooters for outdoor learning. And a final example uh, is St Timothy's in Coatbridge, where they've been involved in outdoor learning activities all week. For example, the P1s went on a forest walk this week to learn about autumn and apply it to science. They are in a partnership with uh, the fabulous Parent Action for Safe Play, which involves children working with their gardener in the orchard and polytunnel, which have been developed in the grounds of the school. Their nursery classes are involved in forest walks in Drumpelgir also on a regular basis. So, Poseidon officer, there's, there's fantastic work going across my area, and as I said, I could have mentioned many other schools, and I know this, uh, you know, personally myself and my own son's nursery forest walks. And it's not just the schools, the, the BBs, the air cadets that are based in my constituency and others do a fantastic uh, job in promoting outdoor learning. And I recently attended a, a, and presented at the first Coatbridge Boys Brigade prize given and heard about the camping and other outdoor works like um, that they were doing as well and, and the prizes that they're being given out uh, to some of the members for that. I'll end, presiding officer, um, by saying that I do try where possible to, to practice this myself. And so today I'm very much looking forward to the weekend to get out with my own children. And as always, as others have said, regardless of the weather, because they, they don't care, uh, and make use of the great spaces my area has to offer, like Gartcosh Nature Reserve, Trampelia Locks, and in Beth Park, to name but a few. Thank you very much. Alison Harris, followed by Tom Arthur. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm pleased to be speaking in today's members' debate on the Outdoor Classroom Day, and I thank Ruth McGuire for bringing it to the Chamber. Today, as we all know, is Outdoor Classroom Day, and worldwide, children are taking to the outdoors to learn. Here in Scotland, more than 600 schools are participating, giving thousands of children the opportunity to head outdoors to learn, play and develop. And it's important that our children get the chance to do this, because the world of today is very different to how it was 30, 20 or even 10 years ago. Back in my day, perhaps mostly because there was a lack of other things to do, children would often go out and play with their friends as soon as the school, the school bell rang. You know, but I think back, we didn't have computers, mobile phones, etc. In 2016, there was a survey by Persil, and they found that these days, nearly three quarters of children in the UK spend less than an hour playing outdoors each day. One notable reason for this is the fear that, that they're not, it's not safe to play in outdoors anymore in your own area. So while there is a, ra a range of factors contributing to this statistic, it is no coincidence that the fall in outdoor play has happened at the same time as a rise in computerised play, with the same survey also showing that children now spend twice as long playing on screens as they do outside. And though I believe the huge advancements in technology have been beneficial and should be fully taken advantage of, it's also important to encourage a balance in children's lives growing up. It has been shown in studies and in actual practice that outdoor learning has many positive effects. Perhaps most obvious, it improves children's health. Taking part in outdoor classes gives them the opportunity to get their, their daily hour outside. Beyond health, educational benefits have been observed including the development of critical thinking, problem solving, concentration and even social skills. The more I say, the more I think, I'm, I think I will join Ruth McGuire outside afterwards for some fresh air. <laughs> the benefits to education have been witnessed by both teachers and early learning and childcare providers, who have said the change in envi environment gives children new topics to think of and encourages both leadership and teamwork in accomplishing tasks. However, teachers and childcare providers have highlighted some barriers to outdoor learning too. One teacher who spoke with my office praised the idea of outdoor learning in principle, but said amongst teachers there was a general feeling of a lack of understanding on what the desired learning intentions and outcomes were meant to be. Having graduated with a degree in primary teaching within the last three years, she added that she had experienced a distinct lack of training in the delivery of outdoor classes which she said led many teachers to avoid the practice due to lack of confidence. This view is shared by other educationalists across the country. 
On top of this, a couple of drawbacks exist. Firstly, extra care needs to be taken to ensure the safety of the children, and this does have a real cost attached to it. And secondly, being based in Scotland, we are perhaps not as well equipped for all year round mm -hmm. outdoor learning as countries such as Australia, who in many ways pioneered the outdoor project, learning project. So let's encourage our children outdoor, but let's also leave the decision on the level of outdoor learning to the qualified professionals, mm -hmm. Scotland's teachers and early learning providers. They should be the ones to decide how they want to approach the delivery of outdoor learning. So today on Outdoor Classroom Day, I welcome the promotion of outdoor learning. I think it's one solution to the problem of encouraging Scotland's children outdoors. And indeed, I think it's letting them experience the joy of actually being outdoors. Perhaps more training could be provided to our teachers across Scotland in the delivery of outdoor learning, because if done correctly, studies have shown it can improve our children's attainment, their health and help build character. I certainly think it's important to have a balance between outdoor and indoor classroom learning. And if I just leave you with the former Secretary of State for Education, Food and Rural Affairs, Liz Truss, once put it this way, our children should be climbing trees, not the walls. Thank you. The final two contributions in the open debate are Tom Arthur, followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. It's a real pleasure to have the opportunity to take part in this debate. And I'd like to thank my colleague Ruth McGuire for securing the debate and also to thank all of the speakers who have preceded me for an array of very thoughtful contributions which have certainly helped develop my understanding of the benefits of um, outdoor learning and outdoor play. I think many of the arguments as I say have been very well rehearsed already and its potential for improving socialisation, physical and mental health and well-being. I think another key area that's been touched on is its pedagogical utility. I, I've certainly, um, in my experience, have felt that there was always a very strong correlation between excitement about a subject and one's capacity to learn that subject. In my pre-political life, I was a, a piano tutor, which didn't afford much opportunity for any outdoor teaching. However, a, a method of teaching which involved the child simply sitting at the piano and not having the opportunity to go up, to dance, to sing, to to a, a broader degree of physicality would be quite limiting and that's an incredibly important part of the learning process for, for a musical instrument and it certainly applies I think to academic subjects as well. I th certainly have been struck by some of the comments in, in this debate as well with regard to the uh, advance of computerised play. I can perhaps divide my childhood into two separate eras before PlayStation and after PlayStation I, I was very fortunate to grow up in Barhead um, with my parents' property backing on to the Levern Burn and there was nothing I loved more as a kid to go in the burn, building dams, fishing and going on adventures and equally just a short walk away was the foot of the Ferenies Braes where again I and my brothers would go and play. And I share this as just to give an, uh, an example of how, how childhood experiences can have such an impact later in life. One of the... Uh, favourite holiday locations of my family growing up was Rosneath Caravan, uh, Rosneath Castle Caravan Park um, at Gerloch Head and my younger brother Martin would regularly go down to the beach and disappear for hours collecting eels and crabs and all sorts of other beasties that he could find. Now he went to university um, to study psychology and in the end he didn't enjoy it. He is now almost 30 years old back studying zoology and absolutely loving it and completely engaged. And after you know years of perhaps not being engaged, I find it fascinating how he's returned back to that uh, uh, original experience that enchanted in, in him and energized him as a child. And I think it's absolutely vital that we make sure our ch young people and our children have that exposure to the outdoors because we know all of the benefits that, that it brings, um, and particularly in areas like problem solving. And there will be skills and abilities that children will acquire with outdoor learning, which is simply would be impossible to deliver within the uh, classroom. Now, of course, I do have a, another constituency connection I wish to highlight. I um, very much um, want to commend the work of Wallace Primary School. Um, and Eldersley in my constituency of Renfrewshire South. They, at the moment, are seeking funding via the um, Aviva Community Fund. Uh, votes for that close um, very, very soon. But they have a, they are, uh, within the 
perimeter of their um, school have a wooded area and they are seeking to develop this to enhance their um, outdoor learning offer to their children and young people and I very much want to commend Wallace Primary in their endeavours and I would encourage all constituents and elders across Renfrewshire South to back this project and I also just in closing also want to highlight the work of elders of the Community Council who again through the Aviva Community Fund are seeking funding to uh, install a play park in Eldersley for which there is currently a lack of because while it's important of course that our children have the opportunity for outdoor learning and play in school we want to make sure they're able to do that out with school hours particularly during the summer holidays as other members have alluded to but in that note I would like to conclude and very finally extend an invitation to the Minister to come along and see the wonderful work that's going on at Wallace Primary for herself. Thank you. Now call Alison Johnson. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, Tom Arthur describes his, his um, experience of play as before and after PlayStation, and I think it's probably fair to say mine is before and after Etch-a-Sketch, um, which at the time was regarded as quite high-tech. Um, seriously, though, I'd like to thank Ruth Maguire for bringing this subject to the Chamber today. It's really important, and I think it deserves more attention and recognition than it gets. And I, too, would like to thank those organisations like the Scouts, um, for the briefing today, but also for their long-standing commitment to getting our young people outside um, and for helping them develop an appreciation of the outdoors and its many benefits. And I'd also like to thank Play Scotland for their ongoing work on this agenda. I mean, as Rona, has, as Rona Mackay has pointed out, the Scouts are calling for more investment in helping parents and carers to take part in outdoor learning with their children. Um, and they are running parent and child camps that are, are open to those who are not involved with the Scouts. So there's good work going on. There's good work going on in this city too. Um, at Cramon Primary School, the Loris, Loriston Castle Forest Kindergarten, um, it's part of an Edinburgh City Council pilot and it offers 600 hours of nursery and 500 hours of forest. 500 hours of forest annually. Um, I think we would all benefit markedly from that and the, the children there definitely are, are experiencing a lot of benefits and I believe the minister is aware of that, that pilot. And it's not an accident that the shortlist, the entire shortlist of the UK's best nurseries at last year's Nursery World, World Awards were made up of outdoor operators. Now, the children of Loriston Castle, they don't bat an eyelid if they're out and it's raining but that isn't the case everywhere. In an independent survey um, of March this year, parents surveyed mentioned their children used the excuse of wet weather, fears about getting muddy, tiredness, and a dislike of the cold as reasons for not playing outside. One in 10 children said they'd rather stay indoors to avoid getting dirty or touching germs, and 30% were just simply too engrossed in video games to go outside. So there is work to be done there is a culture. We have to develop a habit and make sure children understand, you know, what fun they can have outdoors. And I think Outdoor Classroom Day is really important. It's about encouraging more time um, to learn outside, but also about learning through play every day. And I think it's clear that there is more focus um, on this area required. I mean, as a, an athletics coach, I know that outdoor play is crucial for developing physical literacy. It develops self-confidence, it develops strength, balance, coordination. Children and play, they should just go together. Those words should go together, shouldn't they? You know, Article 31 of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child you know, tells us that every child has that right to play. But for too many children in 2018, you know, sadly, they don't. We know in other parts of the globe, children as young as five are going out to work all day, every day, you know, in situations that we here in Scotland can, can barely imagine, factories, mines, quarries. But children in Scotland too, we need to do all we can to make sure that in this wealthy, affluent country, that we're contributing to that right to play, that we're making sure that it happens, that we're not hindering that right to play. Unstructured play outdoors can be transformational. You know, children benefit so much from the, the fact that they've overcome a big challenge, that they've taken a risk. Taking risks and failing to do something the first time they try, but eventually getting there is key to building resilience. Um, it's absolutely key to good mental health and good physical health. 
So I'd be grateful. I, I look forward to hearing the minister elaborate on how she's going to take this agenda f you know, further forward in Scotland. It's clear that there are good things going on, but it's clear that there's more we could be doing. Thank you. Call Marie Todd to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please. Thank you. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to have the opportunity to close today's timely debate on Outdoor Classroom Day. Um, and I'd like to thank my colleague Ruth Maguire for highlighting this really important educational initiative and also for all of the hard work she's done uh, campaigning on this issue. I'm really delighted that the Parliament's celebrating this initiative and I'm also delighted to find so many passionate advocates um, across the chamber because it's something I feel very passionately about and um, perhaps having grown up in that very West Highland um, territory with all the midges and mountains. <laughs> Most of the midges. <laughs> We know the benefits of um, outdoor learning and exercise and play for children are, are significant. Playing, learning, having fun outdoors helps to improve well-being and resilience and increase health through physical activity. It provides children with the opportunity to develop a lifelong appreciation of the natural world. So it, it naturally um, encourages good stewardship of the environment. A growing body of uh, research also shows a positive impact on educational um, attainment, which a number of you mentioned. The, we should therefore be very proud that Scotland's a country that recognises, values and promotes outdoor learning and play. The government's committed to continuing that tradition throughout all stages of the learner journey. And that's why we've created a policy framework in which outdoor play can be delivered as a foundational a foundation of the educational experience. Um, it was great to hear this morning from Carly Sefton. I visited um, Happy Days Nursery in Dalkeith. I had, um, we were shaking apples of a tree. I fell off a scooter. Had a great start to outdoor cl classroom day. Um, but it was great to hear from Carly Sefton, who is um, the CEO of uh, Learning Through Landscapes, that Scotland's leading the UK in, out in promoting outdoor learning. And she mentioned the world so she quite rightly recognised that academics from all over the world are coming to Scotland to learn from what we're doing. Um, in my own portfolio we've um, provided £862,000 um, of funding to Inspiring Scotland to support eight local authorities across Scotland to develop and increase access to the outdoors as a focus of the expansion of funded early learning and childcare. I'm determined that this expansion can provide an opportunity for us to really um, define outdoor learning as part of um, our children's early experience experience. Yep. Liz Smith. I'm, I'm very grateful to her for doing that and entirely agree with what you're saying. I think there's a lot of really good things happening in the early years. I think just to pick up the point that Jenny Mara made, um, it's the next stage that's vital uh, as children grow slightly older where many of them can sort of drop off from these activities that we really need to be focusing on continuing uh, the interest in outdoor education. I think there's a lot of issues there about staffing and about provision. Would you agree with that? Marie Todd. Certainly, and I'll go on to um, respond to the point that Jenny Mara made just very shortly. Outdoor access and play are already central in the new health and social care standards, and we're going to ensure that outdoor play is also a key component of the new national standard for early learning and childcare. Just last week, we launched a position statement in partnership with uh, um, Scotland's National Coalition on Outdoor Play-Based Learning, and that's an important coalition of 50 organisations and national bodies who've committed to work together to embed playing and learning outdoors as an, as part, as an everyday activity and to celebrate it as a fundamental part of growing up in Scotland. Um, and our commitment to early learning and play definitely does ex um, extend beyond early learning and childcare in Curriculum for Excellence. We have a framework through which outdoor learning and play can be used um, to deliver education in all curricular areas between the ages of 3 and 18. We encourage teachers to engage with motivating, exciting and diverse outdoor environments through continued support provided by Education Scotland. We've also taken the important step of embedding outdoor learning within the curricular theme 
of learning for sustainability. Scotland's a world-leading re reputation in the field of sustainability education, and we recognise that contact with the natural world will help our young people to understand the importance of environmental sustainability. Um, in response to... Oh, Oh. <laughs> in, response to, <laughs> in response to Jenny Mara's point, we're currently developing a strategic framework for after school and holiday childcare. Right now, we recognise that that's a really significant um, part of tackling the attainment gap. And um, given our commitment to outdoor play in, uh, and our track record so far, I have absolutely no doubt that outdoor um, learning will be a part of that. Yes. Jenny Mara, I, I thank the Minister for that commitment. Would she go as far to say that during the school holidays in out-of-school care clubs that there should be a presumption that the children should be outdoors as much as possible? Marie Todd. I'll, I'll certainly consider it. I mean, I would um, go further. The after-school um, clubs that I visited Outdoor learning is an important part of the after-school component as well. I think it's really important that children have play outdoors every single day. Um, so I would uh, not restrict um, my, my intentions for embedding outdoor play just to the holidays. <laughs> Certainly. Alison Johnson. Thank you. At the cross-party group on children and young people, we previously had a discussion about the fact that some children do not have appropriate clothing um, or footwear for those wet days and we've had a discussion about the need perhaps in school cloakrooms to make that just part and parcel of school you know um, kit that, that, that there are wellies and, and and appropriate clothing for all children to use for these very important Marie Todd. Certainly in early years they are um, almost universally provided as part of the nursery equipment. Children and young people have many rich opportunities to engage in outdoor learning and play activities as part of their education. But play and access to outdoor needs to continue beyond the school and nursery gates. And our play strategy launched in 2013 recognised this. And it sought to deliver a whole range of actions that enable Scotland to be the best place in the world to grow up. We've provided funding to the Go to Play programme, recently renamed Thrive Outdoors. And Thrive Outdoors um, are doing incredible work, including the Play Ranger programme. Inspiring Scotland's um, work as part of the Active Play programme has been proven to increase physical activity and is absolutely definitely linked to um, emotional, social and cognitive development. Um, I'll, I'll conclude because I have lots more I want to say. This is an absolute personal passion of mine, but I want to thank all of the members for their thoughtful contributions this afternoon. Outdoor learning and play is absolutely vital in enriching the educational and social development of our children and young people. An outdoor classroom day is a fantastic vehicle by which the associated benefits can be delivered. I'm delighted to accept Tom Arthur's um, invitation and I'd be willing to accept any invitations from colleagues to visit outdoor learning initiatives in their constituencies. I'd like to restate the government's commitment to this agenda and our desire to ensure that outdoor learning and play is not just delivered today but every day for the benefit of all of our children and young people. Thank you. That concludes the debate and this meeting is suspended until half past two.